Like, here we go. Check this out. This is Whole Nother Level with Dwayne Lindo. You know, frankly, I, I, I feel that we shouldn't even be talking about this. Simple as that. The great L. Bushman. They have to make so many adjustments, but I don't know what they have to do. They need a mirror. They need a mirror. Our girl, Kristen Yalwin. Yeah, it's going to be another show. Britney Spears has her show in Vegas. The Raiders are going to have their show in Vegas. Frank Mize. Did they win the offseason in free agency? Yes. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Craig Cousins. How can you not put Tom Brady number one on the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks? Man, this guy's a legend. Ring speak. And Eric Wilson. I didn't know Eric was going to let you talk. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I've seen enough Facebook posts to know that you're not a Giants fan. <laughs> Let's go. Good man. is playing the, the safety position. He just closed. Gioza. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the overtime buzzer beater last night. Florida over Wisconsin, 84 to 83. And with that, we welcome you to another edition of Whole Another Level right here at Cowork, Florida. I'm your man, Eric Wilson. I am joined by the great Al Bushman. The factual Frank Mize and back in the building. Haven't seen this guy, I think, since uh, Super Bowl Sunday. He was too busy celebrating the past two months, man. I think he dropped by one time. Craig is back in the house, baby. What's going on? Happy belated birthday, man. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. I'm good, man. I watched some of that game last night, especially the end of that game because I got out of work. And uh, wow, is all I can say. Two actually finishes. Wisconsin hit the exact same shot almost to get him to overtime. And then, honestly, I thought the game was over, but you never know. Come back down and a floater three for the win, keeping the Florida teams alive. I just want to say, finally. I can't believe we haven't. There, that was, there hadn't been any games like that before those two. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. yeah. Finally, some, some high-octane drama. The seating was awful. So that's why yeah. we had to wait this long to get a really good game. Yeah. But we're starting to finally get some really good games. <clears throat> I mean, unbelievable. What's I his mean, name? Chioza? Chioza? I mean, Vermont wasn't in there. So. Man, Vermont shut was, up, man. Vermont, man. Shut up about Vermont, Vermont, man. Vermont was Why you got to bring up Vermont? Did you guys bet on that game? No, we did not. <laughs> no, we didn't bet on that game. I have been officially not allowed <laughs> to make any bets until next football season. You already bet me. I, I Well, that the football. Yeah. But, but the, bet, else. the bet's already been shook on. Right. But Who I'm told you that? Your wife? No. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, no. She just gives me those stern looks like, really? There's been a, we have a bunch of financial advisors at our day job, so they yes. advised him not to make any financial Smart advice. men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One in particular, uh, a big fan of our show, Mr. Rafael Tony Lopez Jr. Can you say he, that again three times fast? No. no. Okay. But he has, every time Evan and I, every time he hears Evan say, you want to bet, he stands up and goes, hold on, hold on, hold on. As Eric's advisor, this man is not allowed to make any bets until football season. He'd have lost enough money. <laughs> the, ne the next bet I win, he has to give me all uh, quarters in a bag. I said I give him a bag of nickels. No, we'll, we'll, no, yeah. We said quarters. I know we did. We'll we discuss that. We'll discuss worth that. Of quarters in the bag. We'll discuss that in football season when okay. it comes around to it. But anyhow, whole nother level. 813-699-5353 is the number to call and chime in. We definitely want to hear from y'all today. So March Madness. I think this year has truly epitomized the word madness because you just never know what's going to happen game to game, day to day. I mean, listen, Florida being a number four seed up against a hot Wisconsin after their beat over Villanova. Craig, you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, for Wisconsin to send that game into overtime was one thing. But then for Florida to come back and at the buzzer, just a floater to end this game. Unbelievable. Yeah, some of the things that are going on right now, if, if you look at the landscape of the teams that are left, I mean, honestly, there's two Cinderella's in my opinion. You know, Xavier, obviously, um, nobody expected them to get this far. They've been playing lights out. They play against tonight against Gonzaga, which a lot of people thought would falter in the tournament. 
but they only lost one game all year, and they're showing everybody game to game why they're who they are and why they should be there. So maybe this is the year that they get over the top. But then the other one, I mean, we've all met the man, Frank Martin, what he's doing in South Carolina. The fact yeah. that nobody was talking about South Carolina pre-tournament. I don't. You can call the show and tell me you were. I will not believe you. So you know that, that's just the fact of the matter. But he's showing that he's a fantastic coach, and he has his guys, and they're rallying around him, and they believe in his system. And uh, you know, them two are the, definitely the Cinderella stories. And then Florida. I mean, people thought Florida would win a game or two, I think. But I don't, I don't think that they would th – thought most people, unless you went to Gainesville, thought they'd be where they're at right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, if South Carolina had an offense, I mean, they, they, they would probably win it. I mean, they're, they play such good defense. I mean, that's basically – I mean, again – Frank Martin's calling card, but they still. have a, they have a couple players that look like they could play running back in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. I, look, Xavier Xavier makes the tournament every year. I mean, so I, I I'll give him Cinderella because they're a smaller school, but they're they've proven themselves over the years that they're not you know they're not just happy to get in and basically take their loss and go home. They they usually at least win a game or two. I, I think this is the deepest run though that they've ever made. I, they, they've made it to the Sweet Sixteen. This is their first trip to the Elite Eight, and how that coach is still at Xavier. I mean, he, he's had other jobs offered to him before, too, over the years, and he stayed. So I'll, I'll be curious if, if this is the year that somebody doesn't, you know— They get, lost their get, starting get point guard yeah. halfway through the season, I believe, and they went on a six-game losing streak. So for them to kind of rally around each other— I mean, losing your, your point guard, your signal caller is huge to begin with. Yep. That team has really bounced back and responded to the challenge. Listen, I'm just saying— Personally, and, and Craig, you have not been here to understand my reasoning, but I was so and still am against Baylor. I'm just glad they're out. I'm just glad that Baylor is no longer in the tournament. I am so happy. When we see Frank Martin, hopefully we get to see him this year, um, I'm giving him the hugest hug. And when he asks why, I'm going to say, because you whooped Baylor's ass for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Eric, Bottom line. Eric picked Baylor to lose, not because – to the whole football deal. Exactly. Not not because he thought that Baylor would get beat, but because of yep. the football thing. Yep. And it was. Well, I, I am not cheering for Baylor in any form they're or easy fashion. Easy to root against now. Definitely. Easy. I'm not. I'm not doing it until they clean up their act. And as far I don't care what anybody says to me, because I thought about this this morning. Because Frank, when we talked about this on Tuesday, you know, and and Great Old Bushman, you as well. You gentlemen understand where I'm coming from, but what you can't understand is, or what you're trying to fathom is, okay, this has nothing to do with basketball. And what I'm saying to you is I look at it as a whole and I actually have a response to you two gentlemen. My reason, my level of disgust for Baylor across the board is because, you know what, there are a lot of negative stuffs going on in colleges. We know that. OK, we know that. But this one has come to light. And me personally, I just cannot accept the fact that it has not been handled. It has not been dealt with. Yes, some changes have been made. But I have seen no progress. So to me, it's like they talked about it and now it's swept under the rug. This is something that shouldn't be swept under the rug. And I'm not trying to get too politically here on a show. No. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying no. to you is I will not support Baylor in anything until I start to see a change being made at that university. And, and again, my opinion, my opinion alone. New, new football coach, a, a new athletic director. I want to. I want to see change. All right, so let's go universe. back on the lighter Ch side Ch of everything. Ch so, <laughs> all right, yes. Matchups so, yes. tonight: Xavier and Gonzaga, Oregon and Kansas. Who you got? I still got Kansas, and you know what? I I'm still going to roll with Gonzaga. I'm actually going to still roll with Xavier because I have throughout the whole tournament. Right, and then I'm going to get Kansas, of course. Yeah, Xavier, and uh, I, I like. I'd like to see Xavier win. Um, Kansas look. Kansas looks tough. I mean, they they're they're, they they're going to be they're, they're going to be a hard out. I I was skeptical about them because when Kansas is the one seed, they usually blow it. Those are the years in the tournament that they usually don't make the Final Four and don't do anything. So, but this year, I mean, it's, it's going to take. I mean, it's going to take a hell of a game for somebody to beat them. Well, listen, uh, you know, they don't call him Mr. February for nothing. <laughs> Kansas coach Bill Self, they call him actually Mr. February because he has such a good record, but w for whatever reason, when he gets to the tournament, he kind of falters more so than, you know, their expectations, they never exceed them for the most part, other than when, you know, Mario Chalmers hit that shot and they obviously won the championship that year. But, you know, it's been few and far between. But, uh, you know what, they're playing at a high level. And, I, and Oregon's ranked a third seed, but 
they I th- feel like that they've exceeded their expectations this year. So I, I, I see Kansas winning this game by probably 10 points, double digits, close to it. Um, and then uh, I, I feel like Gonzaga's had a great matchup all year, like this whole tournament. They haven't had to beat like a, a powerhouse to really get where they want to be. And I think that they'll get it done uh, tonight. So I got the two favorites actually winning tonight. All right. So tomorrow afternoon we have an SEC big matchup, South Carolina going against number four, Florida. And then the big matchup in my eyes is the UNC Tar Heels versus the Kentucky Wildcats. One versus two tomorrow afternoon, late at 5 o'clock. So who do you guys got in the first matchup with Florida and South Carolina? I'm going to roll with South Carolina. I really am. Uh, after what I saw last night, you know what? This is a team that refuses to go down. And so I'm, I'm going to roll with them. I'll say South Carolina. Interesting game. I think uh, for Florida, this is either going to catapult them to the next level because they're going to be riding high off that win or all their emotions were going to be sucked out of that win and it's going to go the opposite way. Um you know, obviously we live in the state of Florida, but, you know, I like the way Frank Martin coaches and what he does and what he's brought there. So I'm not going to pick a winner. I'm just going to root for Frank Martin in this situation. Uh, so I want South Carolina to win. Um, I, it's going to be close, but like I said, it could go either way in that game. And then the other game, um, <laughs> it doesn't seem like John Calipari is doing it again. I mean, this team was kind of inconsistent throughout the year, and then yep. right yep. before tournament time, they turned it on in the uh, in their tournament, and then you know they they finished every game in the in the actual NCAA tournament real strong so far. Yeah, North Carolina is a tough out. This is the best matchup by far um, that the tournament's going. You know, as far as big names going against each other. Yeah, uh, bad for both teams because they got the short end of the stick when in the bracket. I'm going to go with North Carolina, but I won't be surprised at all if Kentucky wins. Did anybody think? That at the beginning, that by the time we got to the Elite Eight, there'd be three SEC teams in the tournament. I thought there'd be three ACC teams, but not three SEC teams. No, yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, and especially, I'm going to roll with South Carolina just because they look like they're actually getting better. And, I mean, they're they're familiar. I mean, they played each other in the regular season. So, I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot of surprises in this game um, from that standpoint. But I think just the way South Carolina has been playing throughout the tournament, they look like they're getting better each game. Uh, North Carolina and Kentucky is, it, it for me, it depends. Kentucky goes as Monk. I mean, he some games he can score 30 points, and then some games, like, he's, he disappears and he's gone. Uh, I'm going to roll with North Carolina just because I, I think they are the better team. But, look, Arkansas almost got North Carolina. I mean, so they're – they're not unbeat. They're not invincible, I should say. Right. I mean, for the second game, I'm going to roll with. Uh, I'm going to roll with Kentucky. You know, I've seen enough one seeds this year go down, and right now Gonzaga and Kansas are the only two left. I mean, I know. Granted, half the half the number ones are gone, but I think we're going to see another one go down. I only think one number one might get into the final four, and I think that uh, Kansas. I think their run comes to an end tomorrow. <clears throat> Eric, I'm going to roll with you, too. I got Kentucky actually winning my whole bracket, but I look at South Carolina's track record so far in the tournament. They beat uh, they beat Marquette, pretty decent club, and then, of course, they take down my, my Blue Devils. So that alone tells me South Carolina's hungry. Right. And I always go against Florida anyways, so I am going. <laughs> keep that Cinderella going. I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to keep it going with South Carolina to beat Florida. All right. Everybody's rooting for South Carolina, or at least, you know, I think that's going to well, happen. Well, Craig, you haven't given a definitive answer. Okay, I'm you picking just South said, Carolina. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you are allowed to stick with because we do live in Florida, and I, I – listen, I get it. You want to kind of cheer for the home state. However, Well, if USF would ever get together no, and make the, the tournament. Home, the home state is Florida State. <laughs> oh, here we, no, actually, for us, it would be the Bulls because we are here closer to Tampa. Hey, well, USF hey. just hired a new uh, basketball coach. So Yeah, they did. They you needed never to. Know. All right. If we're waiting for USF to get their basketball program <laughs> together before be a long, we start long time. rooting, yeah, Frank, you've been might. shooting. You've been shooting outside, looking pretty good, or what? <laughs> I heard they're in the market it, for a couple shooters. It might be a while. <laughs> this is this is. Can you can you shoot the three? Uh, actually, I can. I, I, I can shoot. Yeah. See yeah. the okay. three, be the three. There you yeah. go. All right. Well, you know what, gentlemen, good stuff. Start the show. When we come back, we're going to touch on something that I am extremely happy about. We no longer have to listen to one particular man, and we are going to get into that and tell you who he is when we come back. You are listening to us. Home on level at Cowork, Florida. We'll be right back. That's a record. And welcome back to Home on level right here at Cowork, Florida. Factual Frank, Great L. Bushman. Craig is in the building, and your man, Eric Wilson. So, 
Can I just say, gentlemen, even though I know I'm wearing all black today, I am extremely happy for one reason, because we no longer have to listen to LaVar Ball talk about how great his son Lonzo Ball is because UCLA lost last night. So can I just say thank you because no more do we have to see this man plastered all over TV. And I truly hope that this, our show, is probably going to be the last time we have to hear from him. Go ahead, Frank. Um, he's got two more boys. Uh I'm just talking about this year. I, okay, no. I was, was going to say, if you think, Oh, no, 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 no. this I, year? I he's going to be drafted in the top three picks. Trust me, he might go in the first overall. Eric, so I guarantee the dad's going to start talking soon. He's not I guarantee going anywhere. he's not going anywhere. He's going to get his own reality TV show. Yes. Yep. Wait, I can see it now. It's ridiculous. Balls no, I, I wouldn't be surprised if ESPN the, continues to bring him on because people business actually balls. watch him. Well, he, uh, under, Fox has had him on. I mean, he, he's been everywhere. He's everywhere, exactly. He, he's he, still, he was on Fox. He was on ESPN. He was on I, – I, I can't even tell you what else this man's been on. But every time you turn on TV, there was LeVar Ball <laughs> talking about – him, premiering his lot. business, premiering at eight o'clock on VH1. Lonzo being the business of balls. Yeah, being better than Westbrook, Steph Curry. Oh no, he called them all. LeBron out. James, Magic Johnson. I mean, look. It, oh yeah, Magic it, Johnson it, so, saying he himself could beat Michael Jordan one on one. One on one. But okay, <laughs> speaking of that, we got the clip lined up. He was on first take uh, last week. Yep. So. Great L. Bushman, if you would do us the honor, play that clip, please. Sure will. I ain't going to get on that. I'm not going to be like everybody else and talk about, oh, what you did or didn't do when you went college. Forget all of that. Right. What I'm asking you is a simple question. We we talk about the GOAT here, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan, and you running your mouth talking about you're going to beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Why would you say something so blasphemous? In my heyday, blasphemous. he would need help. Really? He too really? small. His name is big, and y'all like, it was a 5-on-5. 5-on-5 five five. Five game, he good. One-on-one, -on -one, I'm undefeated. Never lost. Will you stop it? No, Never lost one on TV. one. That don't make any sense. Just, listen, Can't nobody be really? in a one-on-one. Why are you saying something like that? Why are you saying something like that? That's what exactly. You, you look like you were tired. Hey, let me ask you this like I tell you. That's why you smiling right did now. Did I win or lose? Right. <laughs> did I win or lose? <laughs> right. All I care about is the W. I don't you care how I get it. You were tired from dancing, and you talking about you going to beat Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. How are you going to beat me? You know what? I got to hear how you going to beat me. Okay, so that was basically how the entire show went if you Jeez. watched it the other day. Lonzo Ball just went off. And, gentlemen, y'all have known me now for quite some time. Every now and then, I have a moment such as that where I choose to go off on one of y'all because y'all get on me about Philadelphia. But I can honestly say, even I, as being the hype person that I am sometimes, I'm like, are you serious? Is this what this man actually has to quote Stephen A, formulated your lips to use such blasphemous terms. You gonna beat Michael Jordan one on one? It's a genius. Like I want Michael to come out of retirement for this, for this specific purpose right now. MJ, if you listening, I will. I whole nother level. We will set it up. But why? Why is this exciting people so much? Like for me, it's just like that's a joke. Like he's a clown. I mean, he's a clown that's that's that has a right brand because his sons are good at basketball and he's gonna make money and that's all he wants to do. You know why? Because. ESPN has turned into nothing but TMZ. That's but, all it is. That's but all he, it is. Because ESPN been, doesn't cover sports anymore. ESPN just covers TMZ. reality shows and whoever has the loudest mouth. He's everywhere. He's not just on ESPN. It's it's what people want. I mean, they, there was an article that said Lonzo Ball knows exactly what he's doing, and you're buying everything. Lavar or Lonzo? Uh, uh, Lavar. I'm sorry. You, he knows exactly what he's doing, and you're buying everything he's selling. He's a genius. Because when he says all that stuff. That's what it does. It gets his name out there. It's like, why is that Honey Boo Boo show on TL? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm just Please saying, don't even. I, I'm just <laughs> saying, though. He I makes know. a valid I know point. He does. Why, why is that popular? Because people want to see the train wreck. Yep. He's a genius. Because now people are going to go out and request, was it Big Baller? His, his clothing line, Big Ballers or something like that? Big Ball, yeah. Three Bs. He's something. a genius. He's a marketing genius. And everybody that's dumb enough has bought into it. But my thing is... I understand where he's coming from, okay, as far as making a name for yourself and boosting your brand and promoting your three boys, Genius. which we Genius. talked about this on Tuesday. And what I said, I still hold true to. There are a lot of young black kids who don't have a father. So I can respect and appreciate this man raising his three boys. And look, Lonzo, if you hear him talk. He says all the right thing. He's not a me first, selfish. Exactly. He's not out there promoting himself. I mean, 
he passes the ball more his than, father's doing more it so he anything. don't have to so he i'll say this his it's, he's not speaking about his boys negatively nope. like a lot of right. dads would, you know, be like, like, you know, like Todd Marinovich, I know it's been a long time ago, but, you know, it was always negative, always hard on him about, you didn't do this right, you need to do that and get better. His criticism is always, actually not even criticism, he puts his sons, it's always positive, encouraging them and telling them what they can do. So from that standpoint, I mean, look, those kids probably think they can that they could touch the moon if they jump hard enough or try because of all the, you know, what do you call it, positive reinforcement right. mm -hmm. or whatever. So I'll, I'll give him credit in, in that regard. Um, it looks like, you know, they're, they're good kids. Listen, you know. and he's they, got two more to go. And, he's so. got, and they're in high school. And they can all play. However, and, and to what you said, Craig and, and Frank, we're all feeding into it because now we're talking about the guy. And it's like, I just, it, it's how he goes about it. And that's where I have the issue. It's a genius. Well, the fact of the matter <laughs> is, Lonzo only put up 10 points in one of the biggest games, the, probably the, ga the game that mattered the most, and he got outscored by another two guards on the opposite team, 39 points from Fox, 21 from Malik Monk, and Lonzo put up 10 points. Hey, so, yep. hey, it's at least going to quiet him for a, there we go. For a <laughs> week or two. All right, so big baller brand yeah. right now. I'm gonna order some stuff. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. You gonna look a big baller? We are beans. not looking at big baller brand right no, now. No, he actually stole that from Big Black. You know, from uh, yeah. Robin Big. Uh -huh. Like you take out this B is Big Black. He stole yeah. that logo. Well, there's three Bs though. Look, he's gonna blame. He's gonna blame Steve Alford for that game, because that's what he did with his other two boys, the Chino High School coach. Did you see that story? He blamed the coach because they lost in some finals uh, state. It was it was the coach's fault, right? Basically, and it's like, come on, dude. So I tell you what, Eric, our bet next year or this year coming up. <laughs> oh, 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 oh yes. Yeah. Instead of fifty dollars and money, I want I want you to wear a big baller hat or a, and sweatshirt. <laughs> wait, wait, does that hat say sixty bucks? It says fifty. So that's right on the. Well, there's but, sixty and there's fifty. And people are probably paying for it. Yeah. That's why it's that much. What the or should we get them, get them the leather one? A hundred bucks for a... For, it's a leather hat. What is it? A leather hat? Yeah. How much are the beanies? Uh, I'll find it. Ooh, beanies are $38. $38 So I, I, for I, a I toboggan? Wanna, I think <laughs> a, you, a big baller brand hat and a, and a hoodie, if you lose the bet between me and you. All right. If anybody's... If anybody's actually buying that stuff, if he actually has sales, then he, then does. he is a genius. That's why he's selling then, it for then that much. He is a genius. Will, like 15, will you agree, bucks, will you you agree to that? It, I have to think of something equally. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, no, I want you to. I have to think of something equally humiliating for you to have. Because you know what? You know what? what? I got you. Okay. I got you. Okay. Since we live in Florida, since you're Florida, all about Florida, Florida State. Florida Gator gear? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. I have no problem We got to bet. Okay. If I lose... I will wear a big baller brand, and, and you get to become a meme. I get. It. We have to Fine. create a meme. You can create yeah, a meme. Yeah, the crying Jordan. The crying Jordan. Meme. Fine on, on Eric's can, body. Yes. Fine. There you yes. go. With I'll the big let you put the big baller hat on. <laughs> yes, I will agree to that right here today. However, when I win, okay. Oh, yes, you wait, in Gators if, gear? If you win. No, no. When I win, okay. You in Gators gear, my brother. All right. And I'm going to make you wear it on the show, and you're going to be a crying meme. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, too. <laughs> Frank and Craig yeah, are the witnesses. That's fine, Check too. on this right now. All, right. Done. all, all I know is that I don't have the crying Jordan on my face, so I'm good. <laughs> Listen, I had to wear Patriots gear for you. I don't want to hear you right well, now. Well, you will again, I'm sure, because no, it's not. only a matter of time before you lose another bet. Nope. Should we contact I mean, uh, I Tony actually might throw a little or... money on Evan, because your, your history of betting is not very good, Eric. Should we contact hey, Tony before we do this? Though? Time for a change, my brother. No, we ain't going to talk Tony. I, don't worry. I got Tony covered. We got that covered. So, anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, getting back to this, so he was on first take, and there were a lot of people speculating that finally Stephen A. Smith had met his match. Well, he had a response to that the next day. Here he was. In terms of this notion uh, that somehow, some way, his father got the best of me, you can keep singing that nonsense all you want to. It didn't happen. All you can do no is ask the man. No one said he got the best of you. I just Stephen A. Like, met his match. I in felt what like world? You, I in what like, world? Come I mean, on, please. Stephen A. You guys were listen, perfect listen, together. He was a lot of fun. Uh, he was a lot of fun. But what but are you going to say? You're saying there's listen, levels to this? Well, there you're still on another level? To oh, this. okay. There's no I question. I apologize, but, America. But here's the deal, Mollywood. The fact of the matter is, what can you say? Like, for example, well, Lonzo's going to do this. Lonzo's going to do that. Well, what the hell am I supposed to say if he hasn't played yet? I got to watch him tonight, right? I got to watch him the rest of this NCAA tournament, right? He was talking about his other two sons last time I checked. No disrespect to them. Get their kids, and I wish them nothing but the best. God be with them. But the Prediction. Lonzo Ball or LeVar replaces Max Kellerman. 
Oh, first take. Lord, are you serious? Prediction. Oh, my God. No. That's not going to happen. Prediction. No. 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 <laughs> I don't think. If ESPN goes down that route. Well, ESPN is failing. They're, I, no, I agree. Yeah. They just made a bunch of cuts. I agree. And they people retired people. and moved on and went to different networks. And what Skip's I'm saying. here trying to build Fox Sports 1. But what because I'm, all he does is post on his little Facebook and Instagram about, these are the links to my podcast. Yeah. I'm Skip, like, give he us, has to do that to get listeners. Skip, give us a call. We got you covered, baby. Hold on, level. will take it there for you. Somebody's going to give him something. Yes. It, it, yeah. Whether it's reality, whether it's radio, or his own spot, his own segment. Yeah, no, they'll have a reality show. It'll be, it'll okay. be something like that. Yeah. Let me I ask you. That let happening. me ask you a question. Like, instead in, of Kardashian, instead of him, balls, instead keep, of him going to ESPN, keeping up with the ball. Since he had an <laughs> issue both with Shaq and Barkley, put him on TNT. Could oh, you see him on TNT? I could see that. Yeah. I can see that, but they they can't replace anybody because those core four they have there, everybody likes. I agree. Ernie, jo- Ernie, yeah. you got uh, yeah, Ernie, uh, Kenny Smith, Kenny Smith, Smith not going Barclay, anywhere. Uh, nah, that, that's they, yeah, that's they a would be, they would be there. smart to put him on as a guest spot for the for the a NBA guest draft, for sure for the NBA draft. Okay. Have him on. With them, oh Jesus, that would be perfect. He, look, he ain't going nowhere. Listen, where is he going to go though? I mean, well, obviously, do you think do you think Boston would take him number one overall? L.A. will for L- sure. L- oh, they're, L- already L- would, they're already L- on record. I think, just show I, think I think the Lakers are primed to pick him. I really do. Well, I mean, it, it all depends how the ping pong balls fall because you know the NBA draft lottery is different than the NFL. Yes. But right now, the Celtics have the best shot of getting the number one overall pick. Right? Would they draft him or not? I'm going to say no. No, I, I'm going to say no. So I, you think they would go Markel Fultz or something like that? The, the kid from Washington is projected to be number one. Uh, I could see him. Look, I think Boston is set at – Ball's a point guard. I, I think I think you guys are pretty pretty set at the point. Yeah, but I, the, I've, I like I've heard Bradley, that they, I've heard I like they want to move Isaiah to the two then if that okay, happens. Okay, Yeah. Look – the dude can pass. I don't Des- know. Despite what his dad has done and all his dad's antics, if you're just looking at Lonzo Ball, is he worthy of the number one pick? Yes. The kid can play. I yes, mean, he can. I mean, yeah, okay, 10 points. He Maybe not his best game, but if you look at his body of work, he. I do like the Jason Kidd comparison. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that he's Jason Kidd, well, but he can pass. They're, they're calling him a, a once in – a, a, I guess like a decade type of player. You know, he's not LeBron James, obviously, but he's a Jason Kidd type of player. Um, he can score and he likes to pass the ball. He's not a score first point guard like yeah. Russell Westbrook. He wants to pass the ball and get everybody well, involved. That's, that's why I'm intrigued because if they do put him, if they do decide to draft him, put him at the one, move IT to the two, and then they have a, definitely enough money to pair Gordon Hayward back up with, you know, Brad Stevens. Uh, Brad Stevens playing the three or bring in Paul George or Jimmy Butler at the end of the season playing the three. You have Al Horford at the four and actually go get a center because Al Horford's a four yeah. is what he really is. I mean, I would say that's best pretty pl- scary. I would say best place for him would be L.A. I, I, well, I, I think that's where he wants From to go, UCLA, and I know Magic Johnson and, and wants him there. It's his, with him and his dad, it's, well, his dad alone is such a sideshow. Yeah. It would go great in L.A. Mm-hmm. And they're, I mean, they're looking to, to rebuild anyways in that next year anyway, so I would say, and plus the free agencies. Free agency guys, are, they may be bringing in for that team, too. Yeah. So I, I would say, yes, I would say L.A. would be perfect fit for him. I don't I, – I just don't see it in Boston. I like your analysis, though. Yeah. I really do. I like what you're saying. Ball at the one, uh, IT at the two, and then go around and build with, go with grab Butler a three. or George. Yeah. I, I get you. I just don't think – and this is the business side of me. Mm-hmm. I think for media purposes, I think for marketing purposes – and I think if you really want to kind of reinvent and bring Showtime into the millennial stage, I think he is the key factor. Oh, yeah. Because you still have a father who's going to be courtside sitting next to Jack Nicholas side by side talking about how great his kid is. Listen, if you're L.A., you need to draft Lonzo And that's, what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm saying. From yeah. the marketing business side of things – L.A. is the prime real estate spot. But, For the game itself, I like your analysis of Boston. But, I mean, I, would but say, I mean, Markel Fultz is no slouch out of no, Washington. No, he's not. Before, yeah. before he got injured this season, he was by far the best player in college basketball. Let me, he was averaging uh, upwards of almost 30 points per game. Let me ask you all a question. After what we saw last night with uh, D- is it De'Aaron Fox or – Darren Fox, Fox looks nasty. Yeah, yeah, he does look good. So if he decides to declare, mm-hmm. where could you guys see him going? Because I like him. Like I, He made me sit up and pay attention last night because I thought for sure UCLA was just going to keep the momentum going. I saw him come out, and I was just like, whoa, how, how did I miss you? 
Look, Kentucky's going to do what they do every year with the NBA draft. Four or five of those guys are all going to get drafted in the first round. Yep, some two, two or three of them are hundred yeah. percent first rounders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's just a matter of time. Uh, look, it's all about the ping pong balls, right. And where you end up, and then that's where the jockeying can begin. If teams want to make trades, make moves, and and do things, you're going to see probably a lot of players moved around. I think because look, Paul George isn't staying in Indiana, not after. I don't think what happened when he found out they were trying to move him. And the everything. Lakers want Paul George too, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if Paul George goes to LA. They try to draft Lonzo Ball, and then they basically have their building blocks there for the future with those two those two pieces. Yeah. Who knows what's going on with Jimmy Butler? Are they going to keep him? They, he, I, they look like he he wants to move. Yep. I, I I I'm almost on. I'm going to be on record actually to say either Gordon Hayward, Paul George, or Jimmy Butler will be a Celtic. I'm hoping for Gordon Hayward. I think he's the best fit for the team. But I say one of those three will be on the Boston roster to start next season. I, 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 okay. I can see I can see Hayward and look if if L A gets the number one pick, absolutely mm -hmm. I think they take ball. Well, well, that, yeah, automatically, yeah, that's yeah, a done yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. that that's a done deal. I you might well just that. don't even just go to the number two pick because we already know who the number one's going to be. Yeah. I agree. I agree. All right, gentlemen, let's take a real quick break. When we come back, I want to keep the show going with some NBA talk. Yes, I have a question for you, and I don't know if we're going to hit it. What do you guys think about resting these players? We'll Down talk about that when we come back. You're listening to us, whole nother level. We'll be right back. And welcome back to whole nother level right here at Cowork, Florida. Craig is in the building along with the factual Frank Mize, the great L. Bushman, and your man, Eric Wilson. So Craig teed it up for us before we went to break. Resting players, especially this time of year in the NBA. How do we feel about this? Um, you know, Craig, I am a firm believer that, you know what? You make all this money. You get to do what you love to do. So you play. I don't care what the schedule dictates. So many people have tried to be where a lot of these athletes are at. And some of these athletes are basically stealing money, in my opinion. But that's a story for another time. I feel like you play in the NBA, you play 82 games. Unless you have a serious injury or a family emergency that requires you to not play, you're on the court every night. Mm -hmm. that's I how agree. I, that's how I, I feel. I actually think there's two simple um, solutions, if you will, for it. And uh, I'm not sure if I've heard anybody talk about either, the, either of these solutions, so I'm just going to say what I what's on my mind. First one being, I think that in uh, the new collective bargaining agreement, whenever that comes about, uh, comes out, they need to put stipulations in these players' contracts to, you know, they're making $18, $19 million a year. Guess what? If you miss it, you need to divide that into the game. So if you miss a game, sorry, that paycheck's gone. If it's due to injury, then okay. But if you decide you want you want to take a game off for rest, you don't get paid for that game. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think should happen. So then players are going to be like, listen, yeah, I guess I stubbed my toe, but it's really not that bad because I want to get out there and make my paycheck, as they should. You know what I'm saying? The other thing to do is there's 82 games in a season. Okay? So clearly it's, it's a lot more than if, if you're playing, you know, an NFL type of game or whatnot. So there's two things that, that I kind of break down with this. The first one being the last two weeks of the NBA season, kind of similar to – if you're in position in the NFL, eh, you want to rest your players because you're going into the playoffs. Okay, I can understand that. If you don't want to lose seating and you want to rest your players, that's on you. But us as fans, we know that that is a possibility. So we're not going to go buy the ticket or we will buy the ticket knowing this might be a possibility. Um, and then the other thing to do with that said is make some kind of reimbursement possibly. So like if I, go, if I want to go see LeBron James and you know the ticket's $150, put something on there saying like if LeBron James doesn't play due to rest, not because he's injured or whatnot, you know, the ticket would be prorated to a hundred dollars, something like that. And I, and I think that everybody would be um, a little bit more in agreement on, okay, that's a little bit more acceptable than, you know, you buy a ticket for the whole family two months ahead of time, uh, two days before the game. Oh, we're going to rest our top three players. I mean, come on. No, you're absolutely right. And I, like I said, I have been very adamant about this because, you know, Living in the state of Florida, we still call them, or have they gone back to being the Orlando Tragic? You know, so so <laughs> close to it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So close. when a Golden State comes to Orlando, or when a Cleveland comes to Orlando, there are fans here that pack that stadium out. And I'm sorry, let's call it what it is. They going to see LeBron. They ain't going to see the Magic. LeBron didn't play that game. Yes, he did. 
Actually, March 11th, he did play. I don't think he did. Yeah, he did. I know he did because I thought he wasn't going to play. But <coughs> then our girl, um, what's her name? Chelsea from Linksters. She used to talk. She went to the game. Here, here's my ar- argument on this. And uh, it kind of segues what, what Craig said. You know, going to the whole, if you're in position to go to the playoffs, sit him. I agree with that. Now, going to what you said about if you're a team that is probably going to go to the playoffs and you're playing like a, a really shitty team like Orlando, why start your starters? Let them rest the game if they're playing really a really shitty team. If they, like, I agree with Craig. If they are in position to where they know, okay, we've pretty much sewn up the number one seed. There's two weeks left in the regular season. This is a game that we have to play because it's part of our schedule. Or have it incentivized. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is games in January, games in December. I'm talking about that too. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm talking about if you come to Orlando, and Orlando's not good right now. Okay, and it's anywhere from well, if you're, an, if you're October a, to October to the beginning of March. If you're a Cavs fan and you're living in Florida, you should move back to Cleveland to go see LeBron. That's like saying because I'm a Philly fan, I should move back to Philadelphia. Maybe you should. <laughs> well, then Craig's going back to Boston and Frank's going to Pittsburgh. What you going to do then? I think I think this. Is no, no. What you going to do? Because three of us are leaving. If you're telling us if we want to be fans and we are fans of our team, then we need to basically GTFO. A lot of Skyping. I, yeah, Skype calls. <laughs> I did have a show before this. So. I, I understand that. But what I'm saying to you, you just told me to get out. <laughs> I think I think this is going towards more of a whininess with fans than anything. How this, is it? A, is, I'm paying a, my hard-earned this, money this is a whining, that, to go watch this team, my team, and you, because they going, rest the player. Now, now, granted, LeBron's a bad example because it should be Cleveland LeBron's. But if you're going to go see Golden State and, and whatever, but you're not paying just to see one individual player. You're, I know you're going to see – you want to go see all the players. But right. you pay the money to go see him. Right. Plain and simple. This shouldn't be a, a – re- I mean, this has gone more towards the fan whining whining about this and a business side. This, I kind, I kind of is, agree with that a little this bit. Is a but business. I think that there – I think you have to draw the line somewhere. And I think – but no, I get players that. Players are taking I, I more advantage that. than they should. I know. I get that. And, and I know a lot of superstars nowadays are kind of labeled as – Prima Diva, donnas, prima donnas, and divas, because you know, oh, I need to rest. And you know, back in the day, a lot of players didn't do that, but nowadays. So why can't we go back to that? The game has evolved where it's it's faster. It, all players are stronger and faster now than it was back in the eighties. And you evolve. Let you me, learn how to play. Let me ask you. Let me ask games. you this. Let me ask you this. Would you pay three uh, two hundred and fifty dollars for a preseason NFL game? No, no. because I wouldn't pay two hundred fifty dollars period for a preseason oh, game. No, I would not. Okay. Okay, okay, so so then if you pay $250 for a real NFL game, which you would, because yes. that's pretty much what they go for, and they all of a sudden they're like, uh, Tom Brady gets injured, and then they're saying uh, Ed- Edelman's not playing and Gronk's not playing due to rest. Now I'm like, okay, well, now I'm watching either Jimmy Garoppolo, Jacoby Brissett, and two other backup wide receivers. Chris Hogan and, you, you know, know, I, I mean, get you. You know what I'm saying? So, ne- so now I'm like, eh, I don't know if I would have paid $250. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm kind of coming from. So you're almost paying that to watch a possibly preseason game because you're not really expecting them to kill it. But if it's during the regular season, you're still paying to go watch your team, not just one specific player. You're right. I do, but when, but when Cleveland rests LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love, right. you know, as opposed to one of the three, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different. I mean, granted, you can still see them from the bench. Sitting down. All right, let's so let's, let's, let's eliminate oh, let's God. eliminate Cleveland. Let's talk about Golden State since Golden State well, seems to have a bunch the board. of right. But what I'm, let's just use Golden State as the example because it's not okay. just one person. Now it's Steph, Clay, KD, Draymond, uh-huh. Iguodala. So if they if you if if they Gold, all sit if, if Gold, no wait if, time out if Golden State comes to Orlando mm-hmm. and they rest three out of those five, I'm okay with that. You're okay with I'm that. okay with that. I'm not sorry. I'm not okay with now that. if they rest all of them. Okay, okay, yeah, I would have a That's problem. That's your whole starting five. Still? But it, I'm saying but three you out still five. Have, you still have five other guys you can put on the court. Though. I would say okay, they so, would so, still so beat Orlando. So I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're an Oklahoma City Thunder fan and you're going to you're gonna rest uh, Russell Westbrook, Victor Oladipo, and uh, Steven Adams, you're okay with that? No. Nope. Because I'm sitting there watching Andre Robertson as your best player? No. Nope. Get out of here. You nope. know what I'm saying? So like you can go across the board. Some Some teams only have one or two stars. Right. And we don't get to see them as often. Granted, we can get the NBA TV package if we want and watch them. But if they have, if they come here, because we choose to live here, unless you're the great Al Bushman who's telling you if you're a fan of a team outside of Tampa, you basically need to leave and go back to where you came from. Mm-hmm. I just look at it as, as a business standpoint. If you're a GM, you're an owner of a team, you're going to do what's best for your team. And I listen, Now, I know on the other side of it, yes, the fans are a part of that team. How we about, pay. But if we pay I, to go I, see them. I understand them. that. But if you're trying to win a championship, if you're trying to go. The ultimate it, goal, I agree. The ultimate goal is to win yeah. a championship. Fine. 
So last two if, weeks, but I'm if, good. If, but if it has to come down to a point where you have to rest your players because they may be need, in need of a rest, there, you have to do did it. Did Michael Jordan need to rest when he was winning all the championships? Yep. And how one, about, and how one about, back how about back Shaq back? and Kobe Bryant? I mean, these players would come out with the flu and still play. Exactly. Well, allegedly. The flu game was allegedly. Whatever. Okay, they sick. still came out and played. <laughs> Somebody. They still, Paul Pierce got wheelchaired off and then came back. They still came out and played, and that's what I'm saying to you. I now just, the last two weeks of the regular the season, no, I like that. I, I like that. I, I like that idea. The last fine. two weeks, just yes. like football, if you're in the position to go yep. to the playoffs, cool. Sit all I'm, your guys. I'm that's fine. Cool. I, I, that's a great idea. I'm fine with that. The last two weeks, but them other sixty to seventy games, no. I want you every night on the court. I don't care what court you're in, what city you're in, where you're playing. That's all the millennials. The NBA has just gotten soft. That's what's going on. So right speaking now. of the playoffs, if they were to start today, here's how the seedings would go down. You got Golden State against Denver in the first round. Utah versus the Clippers. Houston versus OKC. San Antonio versus Memphis Maybe on the Western. Winners already or what? <laughs> <laughs> if you if you are who's so inclined, Golden State, who's, Cleveland. Who's resting who? Um, who's resting who? I don't know. On the flip side for the Eastern Conference, <laughs> Golden State could rest two out of the four and still beat Denver. You got Cleveland. Clippers are out. First Cleveland, round. Detroit. Are out first round. I agree. I think Utah would. Would do the Clippers yeah, in the first round. First round. Yeah, definitely. Wow. All the injuries that, that, that would LA go six has. or seven. Definitely. Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fine. So we said Golden State's going to beat Denver. Don't matter if the starting five are playing or the second string starting five are playing. Yes. We're saying Utah is going to beat the Clippers. I Houston think it's be close. They could go either way. Houston OKC. You got Houston Russell wins. versus James Harden. Houston wins. Houston. Houston. Really? Yeah. 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 All they Everybody's have is all they have is Houston. Westbrook. Yeah. I'm gonna take OKC in this one. Uh, look, uh, just because Russell Westbrook has been, I mean, look, and he's been balling this year. Trip dub. But, but they're not really a good team. I mean, they got him and and him and and him and, <laughs> yeah. and, and basically he takes him. thirty shots. They're, again. they're yeah. barely hanging on to that last seed. No, so they got the number six seed. Right they're, now. they're barely hanging on to that. All right, and then San Antonio, Memphis. We I'm San assuming Antonio, we all got Antonio. the Spurs. Yeah, San Antonio is the only team that has. I see. In, San- my, in my opinion, the possibility of knocking off Golden State, and that's if Kevin Durant is not healthy. If Kevin Durant's on the floor healthy. Game over. I see San Antonio as a dark horse. So we've got Golden State, Utah in the second round. And Golden State. we've got you three gentlemen have Houston, Spurs in the second round. I might go six or seven. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I'd say ultimately I like San Antonio and Golden San State. Antonio. So San Antonio, Golden State. And Craig is saying that if KD is healthy, Golden State's going back to the finals. And Frank, if not, let me Antonio. ask you. Golden State. San Antonio. Yeah, it depends about on Kevin Durant. If um, he's healthy, you're saying Golden State? No, no. Okay. I'm saying, but it does, uh, my, my pick would largely depend on Kevin Durant. But even when he's been on the court, look, I mean, I know it takes time to get implemented in and everything, but San Antonio stumped them with Kevin Durant on the court. So it's not like, you know, I would say game over. Um, I've been on record saying that Golden State wins the championship this year. So I, I kind of have to, you know, Fair enough. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ride that horse, but... Wouldn't surprise me at all. I, I think San Antonio could get him. Mm-hmm. Great L. Bushman? San Antonio. You're going with San Antonio to upset Golden State, right? Because you're the one saying Golden State will not win a championship this year. San Antonio. Okay. I, 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 I mean, see it. I, I'll ride. I'm going to ride with Golden State just because I think with KD now, and it will depend on his health, but I think with or without him, I see Golden State going back to the NBA Finals. Let's flip to the east side. And you know what? So I'm going to be first on record to sit here and say, I don't, I'm looking at this now. Cleveland, Detroit, Toronto, Atlanta, Washington, Indiana, Boston, Milwaukee. I'm saying it's going to be a Cleveland, Boston, NBA Eastern Conference Finals, and I don't know who's going to win. I agree to the to one extent. I think Washington Wizards have a chance. Um, yeah. I, I, but I think it's it's those three. Cleveland's a lock to make it to the finals. Like the I don't say they're a lock. I'm saying the Eastern Conference Finals. Oh yes, yes. So yes. it's either going to be Boston or Washington, and they're ultimately going to have to play each other. So that right. So, so I think that obviously that series is going to go seven games. I think. Okay, that's, and, that's my and, question. And they're going to beat each other up so much that I think they're going to lose to Cleveland. So I think Cleveland will be. So in whoever place. comes out between Washington and and Boston will be beat up. Will be beat up. Yeah. And then Cleveland will just have a smooth Boston's, ride. Into- Boston has played Cleveland very tough. <clears throat> the playoffs are a new dynamic. I think Boston is one player away from getting to an NBA Finals. Can we give any type of love to Toronto and say they might actually give Cleveland a run for well, their money in the second round? I, I, think, I think Toronto is going to be a lot tougher once Kyle Lowry gets back because he's been injured. So, yeah. you know, you have him and, De- and DeRozan. They can score with the best of them. You have your Brody Baca in. They're going to have a they're going to have a good team. Um but I, I just don't think that they, they would have to play Cleveland. I think Cleveland's going to win. Okay? Yep, I, I agree with that. 
So across the board. I will say Orlando made a terrible decision, though. Okay, so let's look at this grand scheme of things. You traded Victor Oladipo, which was probably your second or first best score on the team, for Serge Ibaka, and then you rent him for half a season and ship him out, so now you don't have either of them. I mean, what are they doing over there? Yeah. That just annoys me, and I'm not an Orlando Magic fan. But now there's talk that Doc Rivers may come back and well, be the yeah, coach again. I mean, again. you never know. So, but, I mean, the decisions that they're making over there are just idiotic, in my opinion. I mean, the, look, the, the Oklahoma City GM basically just probably has a big grin on his face for basically stealing, you know, uh, from the Orlando Magic. It's Interesting. Great L. Bushman, we haven't heard from you. What do you think? About him going to Orlando? Well, no, just about the whole Eastern Conference. I, I Cleveland's a lock for me. Okay. I, I do see Boston playing Cleveland in the Eastern Conference. Okay. That's good. Yeah, the finals are going to be yeah, good. I think either way, though, yeah. um, the West is going to be more interesting than the East because we and and it has yeah. been over the past so many years. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm just I'm happy to see that there are some Eastern Conference teams that are starting to step up a little bit and it's starting least, to become more balanced, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. There's there's four very very solid teams in the Eastern Conference this year. Yeah. So and it, and actually, if you look at it, like Boston, if they were in the Western Conference based on their record right now, they'd be third in the Western Conference. And they're the second seed. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, like, it's a right. lot more balanced. The but that, but then, yeah. but I think you still have a couple teams sl slipping in at seven or eight, which are, like, around 500. So Less than 500. Less, see, well, again, see, again, that's unfortunate. And the West, for, I think, the first time in a long time, I don't think Denver has a – I think they're under 500, I believe. It's close, yeah. 33 and 37. Exactly. Yeah. So, so they're going to have a, a representative that's not 500 either, it looks like. Well, let me get you guys' thoughts on Devin Booker putting up 70 points last night. Obviously, he was drafted last year, I believe. Um, 70 points for a 20 year old and granted some of that had to do with um, I heard the coach was calling timeouts late in the game with the game like already out of hand and uh, just so he could score more points and he took 41 shots I believe or 40 shots <laughs> 26 free throws I mean that's just outrageous but what are your thoughts on that 70 points is a is miraculous anyways. Listen, it's a milestone for a lot of guys a lot of guys never see 70 points. I mean Kobe's last game he got what 60. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for a young man in his 20s. There's only been like five or ten in history. I, I think so. Uh, you know what? I think this offseason a lot of teams are going to come calling for him because of what he was able to do. Because if he can put up 70 points on the Phoenix Suns. Well, he ain't going nowhere. He's under contract. He's rookie contract for a while. But. All right. But you know what? Some some people might be able to work some magic, and I don't know. Are you trying to say he might go to the Orlando Magic? No, no I'm not saying that. saying that. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I mean, if they're smart, they'll hold on to him. I mean, what, is, <clears throat> what does Phoenix have? I mean, that's that, that's the only thing they have going for him right now. Tell you now, what Orlando really. Magic needs to happen. They need that damn lottery ball to, to, to go strike, uh, number strike, one strike again. so they can either get Fultz or Alonzo Ball. Because that would actually start turning them around, I listen, think. Listen, that type of magic only happens once in a lifetime. Especially with... Uh, and that happened with them. With Shaq and, Shaq and Shaq Penny. and they got Penny, Penny and yeah. then, yep, that's, just that's blew once, it up. Once in a lifetime. So let me ask you guys about this. Um, I want to switch kind of to football right before we get out of here. Let's do it. Um, Craig, you actually brought this to our attention. So the Bucks met with the USF running back, Marlon Mack. Mm -hmm. Great L. Bushman. Yes. What do you think about that, um, having this young running back, you know, homegrown product, replacing... Teach me how to Dougie. Teach me, teach me how to, you know. Wow. If, if, if for anyone like listening, Eric was trying to do the Dougie. You know, I was I'm sitting there if, singing that. If they're, I mean, this is a, a report upon another report where teams are looking at guys. I mean, it's good for, for press around Tama because he's a home, hometown guy. You know, you know, he's played Ray J all throughout his college career. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they did take him. I'm, you know, Tama Bay is also looking at Dalvin Cook, too, to bring a lot of these Florida guys to their team. So, you know, we've talked about this before where the running back class coming in is so deep. Christian McCaffrey is yeah. going to be so <laughs> awesome. That's all I got to say. He ha he literally can do it all. And uh, somebody is going to have a not just one or two, a three or four trick pony when they draft that guy. He can go to slot. He can catch the ball the best out of any back in the backfield. He can run the rock. He can, ret he can help in the return game. Like literally whatever you want um, from him. And uh, the right offense – is going to really utilize his, and then you know, obviously Leonard Fournette's going to be a beast. Hopefully. Yeah, the Bucks were—they're saying the Bucks were looking at Fournette. They were looking at Cook. They were looking at Max. So, I mean, he had a pretty solid combine. I mean, he ran a four-five in the forty. So, I mean, if they pick him up, you know, I like—I would like it. I'm surprised that more teams, and we've seen this kind of. It goes back to you know 49ers or whoever else. I didn't even draft Joe Montana back in the day originally, or you know, Dan Marino was right there at Pittsburgh and he, he didn't get drafted. Yep. And um, you know Victor Cruz, 
he could have got drafted by New England. He played right there. Yep. They didn't dra- it, it, It's actually shocking how little teams look in their own backyard sometimes. Mm-hmm. I think he would be a perfect fit. Yeah. He know he's played in that stadium. USF plays in that stadium. He knows every little intricacies of that stadium, what to expect from the fans, how to get there. I mean, there's zero stress coming there at all. I mean, you're going to um, bring more fans to the Ray J as, oh, yeah. as well. The only thing him. that he needs to clean up personally is fumbles. Fumbles, yeah. If he can get that under wrap, then he is going to be amazing because he because he has the power and w- with the speed in the open field. It just depends on what Jason Light and uh, Dirk Cutter want to do with Dougie because they they really haven't said what they're going to do. I mean, he's still under contract, but they could release him because of the whole drug violation. So yeah. we don't. I mean, we said this before. We probably won't know until the draft. Okay, what's going to go? And on. I apologize, said Joe Montana. I meant Tom Brady going to the Forty Niners because <laughs> no, like, yeah, he was from you. he was from San Francisco. Right? No, I got you. Yeah. And uh, right before we – I almost forgot to mention this. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Team USA. Winning the World Baseball Classic. Just beating up on Puerto Rico. Eight First one, nothing. right? First one, yes. First one. Now, we've discussed the WBC about how I don't like it uh, before spring training in the regular season. but you Have know, you come around a little bit? Um, not in USA. the – USA. You know, I, I – USA. I like the team. USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. USA. <laughs> USA. I like the tournament as a whole because – they're not playing really by Major League Baseball rules. They're having fun. I mean, guys are bat flipping into the stands pretty much. I mean, they're they're having fun out there. I just don't like the placement of it. But to have it every four years, I think they maybe should do it every single year. Just have it in a different spot of the year. Okay. But it's a, it was fa- it was fantastic baseball to watch because all of these teams were just so energetic about playing with their countries, and the U- I mean the U.S. Were, they played great baseball, you know. We have breaking news here at whole another level. Indiana uh, hired a new Indiana coach. has a new basketball head coach. Archie Miller has replaced Tom Crean in Indiana. Wow, as head coach, you leave. I mean, Arizona is <clears throat> actually that's a good job. I mean, yeah, that's a really good I job. I mean, that, that's that's a great opening. And if I'm Arizona, I'm making the phone call to Wichita State. Greg Marshall, come on down. Oh yeah, that'd be great for them. Yeah, yeah it really. Eric, would I be. know you want to discuss this. We can we can go over the one o'clock time. It's it's, it's all right. All right. It's okay. Now, I know you want to discuss about Sam Ponder replacing uh, Oh yes, your boy. Gentlemen, he's not my boy. It's your boy. But, you know, Boomer. It's your boy. I'm actually kind of going to miss him. I'm not. I'm glad he's gone. I know. But he'll be he'll be down here uh, uh actually next month or That's fine with me. He can go play golf somewhere. No, no, he's going to be honored at the uh, Dickie V Gala. Him and uh, sure Huggins. I, I make and... sure I'll step out and get a drink while he's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> not a fan. Huh? I'm not a fan. He's his, not. Listen, his, we have we have a so our, we, outdated. Our love for for gentlemen named Chris <clears throat> in the world of commentating. He's not a fan of Berman. I'm not a fan of Collinsworth. It, to to Evans' defense, a little bit, and and I don't know personally because I've never met him. Neither have I. Neither I have, have heard stories though that he's great, and I and, and I've talked to other people that have met him, and they said he is a complete asshole. To be honest, yep. I don't know either way. I'm so I don't have an opinion. I, there were those sexual harassment rumors they had up against him in ESPN. So, so all I know is that you know some of the things I will miss and other things. There will be. Will you miss the whole? Back, 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 no. back, 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 uh, This kind of sounds his, like a chicken with his head his cut stick, off. Right? His stick was so fine in the '80s, but then when the '90s came and the 2000s, it's out. So nobody man. circles the wagon. Oh. So, so like the think, buffalo bill. So you're gonna miss. Whoop! I'm not gonna miss. No. Whoop! <laughs> you really? Just, whoop! You're going to miss that? I know no. you are. Evan, have you he, met him? No, I don't want to. <laughs> he ruined the Home Run Derby alone. I'm going to personally make I would, sure. I, I stopped watching the Home Run Derby because of him. You Because of... Back, 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 I had back, to put back, it on back, you. Back, 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 I had to put it on you. <laughs> Playing some music in the background? Yeah. Just a quick note. I got the Miller brothers mixed up. Sean is the Arizona coach. Uh, Archie is the Dayton coach. Oh, okay. So he's going from Dayton to Indiana. Okay, yeah, I get I get that. That's right. a good I, I, but Dayton he, he's he's done some good things in Dayton. Yeah, so yeah. That's not he's, a bad no, no. It's not a bad hire. No, no, All right. no. So good for both parties. Sam Ponder replacing Berman I on like Sunday NFL Countdown. I like Ponder it a, I like that. It a lot. Here is what I'm going to say about that. I like that. it a lot. I am not a fan of this. Great replacement. For a number of reasons. Because she's a woman? Is that No. Why? It has absolutely <laughs> nothing to do with her being a woman because you know what? I would rather Linda Cohen, uh, no. Susie Colbert, no, no, or Hannah Storm, no, any of those three, no, no, no. Talk about outdated. You're yeah. talking, no. Does it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. It, Doesn't Susie Colbert do the show she's prior ter- to she's, Sunday it, NFL she's countdown? Terrible. It, it's not about. Or does Hannah do it? Who it, does it? Look, it's not about talent. With that kind of a position, it's 
look, I, I trust me. I know there's people that, that get brought into our station and it's not because they're not qualified. They have a degree. They went to school. But when you see them, you realize why they are so, where so they are. This is what I'm going to call it from this point on. And you're going to laugh when I well, say why this. Why do we have women sideline no, no. reporters? Time out. No, not because. Why are there no men sideline reporters, basically? It's because. There's, there are a couple. Uh, There's a couple of reasons why. Okay. Exactly. But, I, no, I can, here's I what I'm going to say this. to you. And, Frank, you will get the analogy when I say this. So, from now on, we're going to call this the John Pacino mentality. That's what we're going to call it? Yeah. Okay. That's how it works. That's what man. we're going to call it Look, from now she, on. She's for, not unqualified. But, I'm not saying she's not qualified. Eric, she knows her shit. I'm not yeah, saying she, she does or doesn't. But, but I'm saying I would much rather. Oh God! <laughs> and that's the reason why. <laughs> I, would, I would take for those of you that are listening. Take, we got a back-to-back -back snapshot that, of one. That's actually not Chris Berman. That's not uh, Ponder though. Oh, son of a! <laughs> Google images did me dirty that's, again. That's, that's, that's Carissa Tompkin. <laughs> I thought she did look different. So I tell you, I would rather have Carissa Tompkin, Tompkin or uh, Sam Ponder, one of those two. But. Uh, Tompkins on uh, Fox. And in fairness, that, that position, I mean, she's not on there for her analysis. I no. mean, it's still going to be about the guys that played the game and the coaches on the panel and everything. They just need a mouthpiece, basically. You have and three of them right there in Susie, yeah, Linda, and Hannah. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, my goodness. No. I, and, and this, Look, this is going to sound ageism and sex. All right, there we go. Is that her? Uh, that's good. Yes, that's her. She's okay. so gorgeous. So that's Sam Ponder. You Listen, have... Christian Ponder ain't stupid. No. He's steamy. She's okay. steamy, man. Let's, let's, not, let's call it what it is. Yeah, he roped her in good when he was at Florida State before he became crappy in the NFL. Right. No, he, he smart man. Yes, very smart. Look, it, so let's do this again. Okay. <laughs> back, there's back, back, Chris back, 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 and gone. Yes. And there's Sam Ponder. Steamy. Listen, uh, on physical so appearance alone, and that's yes. what moves yes. the needles. Yes. Uh, listen, Eric. I would still say, no, Eric, Hannah, Susie, no, nope. Linda. Okay, you you two gentlemen over to my my left. When you wake up in the morning and you want to turn on Fox NFL Sunday, who would you rather see? And this is gonna make me sound like a pig, but. Skeletor, Linda Cohen, or ESPN? You said you said Fox. I'm sorry. Uh, would you rather see Linda Cohen or would you rather see Sam Ponder? Beautiful, majestic Sam Ponder. Skeletor, Linda. Two. Skeletor. Why are you calling her Skeletor? Because Skele she is a very nice looking she lady. She is a very nice lady. She's a very nice looking lady. I met Susie Colbert when I was in Indiana. Nope. You know what? Wonderful person. I would much rather have her up there. I'm sorry, Sam Ponder. Does anybody what? watch the NFL Network? For yeah, Good Morning Football. Yes, so you know so, Kay Adams. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's a great host, knows her stuff, and good looking. So yep. it's, you know what I'm saying. So so when I when I watch it in the morning, you know, she is part of the reason why I, I turn it on. To be honest, I also like Nate Burleson. I think you know, uh, all Peter Schrager, all of them are good. But it's that that whole dynamic. Remember when Fox you know, NFL Sunday brought in Jillian Barbary to do the weather? Oh yeah, I did. And then they 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 kind of slowly transitioned her into kind of a host of the show. All right then. If you look at look at first take and look at undisputed, there's a reason why the moderator is high. is not a dude. Yeah. Okay, listen. But remember what first take used to be. First take used to be cold pizza, cold pizza. with yeah. Jay Crawford yep. and Dana Jacobson. Yep. So you had the dynamic of the one two, and then you had Skip, and then you had somebody. Yeah, else. Yeah, cold pizza used to have that one girl from, from the Road Rule show show that used to be on cold yes. pizza too. Okay, but now let's transition into first take. First take had to go through a lot of people to get to Molly. You went through Sage. You went through Carrie. You went through... Uh, yeah, but you're, you're naming all females. No, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is... Not, none of them are real. I mean, Sage is pretty hot. Yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all pretty... Carrie cute. is... Have you yep. seen Carrie? Carrie Champion. Carrie yep. Champion on the red carpet? Yep, steamy. Boy! I, look, you steamy. can... We had a news director that <laughs> Wait, came, where did no, this conversation start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that... Honestly, I ponder the thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chris Berman's out. <laughs> yes. Chris that's Berman how the in out. sadly, that's how the industry. Works. Listen, yeah. we got Kristen. Okay. I, 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 I'm hearing everything you gentlemen are saying to me, and there is a part of me that is agreeing with you. What I am simply saying is that particular show. We have Kristen. That She's particular ever show. Here. But when she is here, why well, would not here very and much Kristen, here lately? And, and, but it's only because you know we have Craig. He's Kristen. hardly ever here. And Kristen, we love you. <laughs> but next time you Where's go, <laughs> well, Scribbles had to had an assignment he had to go do. All I'm saying is, Kristen, and we talked we talked about this earlier. Kristen, we love her. But the next time, Kristen, you go to an NCAA tournament and don't tell us about it, 
we gonna have some issues. We gonna Actually, she about. told me when she was on the way, and I right. said, I said, hey, are you going to shoot some film for a whole nother level over there? She's like, yes, I'm gonna post some video, and I have yet to seen a single video I've seen of pictures. her saying whole nother level in the house at the NCAA you know tournament. What I'm I'm like, we saw seen pictures. Did you know her parents were on Going RV? She uh, was, on, she there. was there. on it too. She was on it for like four I seconds. I didn't even know that was a show. Yeah. I didn't either. She I put think it I out there. I heard about it like three months ago and then completely forgot and no, watched it. I saw it. I watched it. So what is, going, R- what is going RV? It's um, basically uh, people are looking to purchase, like I guess, their first RV because okay. they want to Let me to stop travel. you right there. That's an actual show? Yes. <laughs> it's called Going RV. That is a show. And you have yes. three choices that you choose from. And is this on? So, I mean, do they, like, on. travel in the RV and, like, go? Like, is it, like, how yeah. does, what's the dynamic is of it? it on the t- di- is it on TLC? Uh, I don't know. Because no, those it, stupid ass shows. One, right. one of those dumb shows. The dynamic channels. is they are choosing from three different RVs, that whichever is- one is going to fit into their budget and also suit their needs. And we can't get a TV deal? That is the dumbest present. We're working for a show. on it. Yeah, okay. I've got. I can see now. There's some Joker walks into TLC, whatever. I've got a great idea for a show. A family tries to pick between three RVs. <laughs> Go. <laughs> that's the premise of a show. You got to be Jesus, shitting. Jesus, that's like writing a kids' book about a tomato. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, how many of those are out there? I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah, Lonzo Ball's going to have his own yeah, show. Yeah, he's going to have a show. <laughs> if, if Going oh, RV can be a know. show, he can have his own show. Oh, my goodness. By the way, Kristen, we love you. We love your family, by the way. Yeah, we yeah. do. I, I haven't know. seen the show, so I might like it. No, I told her. I said, listen, I said, I want your autograph. I wonder how you much know what they she got said paid. to me? She's like, it may cost, cost you. you. Yeah, I'm like, wait, wait, what? I wonder how much they got paid. Probably a couple thousand bucks. So, yeah. I mean, it all depends probably on how. Five, probably five figures. Well, listen, she promoted it. And well, I, I mean, watched it. I'm not going to lie. shows 16 and pregnant can get people paid. I mean, anything can these if days. If the cash me outside girl can oh. get as much publicity as she has, come on, man. And you just gave her, you dropped a line. Know, on and you gave her, and you gave her. I know. You need to get smacked. I should that. get smacked for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to mute my own mic. Go ahead on. and smack him, Frank. Please. Your next mic. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. goodness. Good. <laughs> Thank you. You can hear him on all other mics. <laughs> Hey, just to let everybody know, um, you know, we're back in the studio on Tuesday, but then we're not doing a Saturday show because Sunday, April 2nd, we are going to be live at Ferg's. Go on Ferg's website, fergsportsbar.com. Also, check out our website, www.hnl3.com. When you go on Ferg's website, look under events, you'll see our flyer. We are up. We are there. All the dates of when we are going to be at Ferg's talking about the Rays this entire MLB season. We got 20 shows lined up it for you. It is right around the corner. Baseball Next season. Sunday. Next yes. week. A week from tomorrow, opening day. We are going to be there from 1130 till 1 o'clock. 90 minutes. We're doing a 50-50 raffle. We're also going to be doing a wiffle ball bat contest. Wiffle bat drunk. Wiffle bat drunk contest. Yes, or wiffle drunken bat I don't know. Contest. We'll figure it out and let y'all know. But we Somebody's are. Somebody's going to be spinning and, and falling and, down. And falling yes. down. Should we get we legal some, papers drawn we up? Might need some yeah, padded, we, we're, anything padded. We're gonna have to get area. some waivers for that. Okay. But make sure y'all come tune in, tune in, check us out, come be with us live. We are actually shooting our commercial that day as well. So you know, gentlemen, y'all gotta look. Listen, your best. Ferg Sports Bar opening day is going to be packed. Get Huge. down there. Yeah, get, get the, your get, seats. We're gonna be uh, broadcasting live. Everybody's record starts at zero and zero. It can be anybody's season. You never know. And the good thing about Ferg Sports Bar and Grill is they open up at nine a.m. On Sunday. Yeah. We're 9 a.m. Making race baseball great again. Yes. There you go. That should be a great hat, Frank. <laughs> I think anything with making and then put put whatever you want in there great again is going to be. Making the, Chris Berman great again? You no. want to do that one? Making Chris Collinsworth <laughs> great again? No. Wait, Chris Collinsworth loves New England. Don't hate on him too much. I, I am always not talks a fan. Up Tom Brady. Not a fan of him. <laughs> I heard you had his jersey from his Bengals days. Did what? he play for the Bengals or the, <laughs> no. was it the Browns? No. He played for the Bengals. Bengals, Bengals yeah. yeah. I was right. Did not have his jersey. What are you? <laughs> You've been gone way too long. <laughs> so, really quick, while we got time here. So, Frank's birthday was this past Thursday. And I'm he pretty did. sure he has a sombrero on. He, he did. He did. did. Okay. He but, did. so... Everybody in here knows, you know, my good friend Lance, another huge Eagles fan. Him and I do our ROE show, which I told him this year we're going to be in studio. But besides that. Okay. So Lance starts talking. Maybe and I'll come said, out and do a New England blog and force uh, me to come in here. Yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> um, Lance starts talking and Lance goes on a little rant about how I am more of a Patriots fan 
since you know I started. Well, I do remember that. He's he, not he was, wrong. He, since, he was questioning your Philadelphia yes, allegiance. He was because he was like, Fair "You enough. have been such a New England fan this year. Homer. I'm starting to wonder <laughs> if you are not as." Bi-. I'm like, "Hold up!" I'm like, "This is you talking to me. This ain't like Craig or Frank or Evan or Dwayne or Kristen or anybody. This is Lance, another Eagles fan." I'm like, "You are doubting my allegiance." To our team, I'm like, hello, I got mine. Where's everybody else's at? I got my, I got my life right here. Slowly turning into the. Pain. No, it's not. How old is that? No, it's not. Yeah. Get that actually, up. It looks like uh, the flying Elvis. Yeah. I need to. I will. <laughs> but my point is, I said, understand this. You got Patriot socks on. Yeah. I didn't even realize that till just now. But Ladies see, and because gentlemen, it, because it's in your eyes, you, like, you see Patriots everywhere. Is, well, because of you and because this, of Russell. These, these might not even be Patriots oh, socks. You just might think they are. Do you yeah. have a uh, Tom Brady full size? No. Like, I do not. Fat head. You, fat head at <laughs> no. home. What would you have those say? man pillows? No. Yeah. Do you no. have a full I have an pillow? Eagles pillow, which <laughs> I'm going to bring. No, Lance, it's Tuesday. But, I'm going to bring my Eagles pillow so y'all can see it. Lance was also questioning, I believe, the influence of Russell. Right. That <laughs> since Eric moved in, you, you know. If I was like, hold up. We got him right where we want him. No. And I said, last season, my whole premise for standing up and being a huge New England fan was because of vindication and because of justice. I felt that Tom Brady was unjustly accused and he had to go through everything. And at the end of the day, what happened? How sweet it was. He got vindication. Remember, he so, did flip flop on the Patriots I did. in the AFC Championship. I did. I did flip the on Pittsburgh them. Steelers I did. Win, so. I, you're absolutely yeah. right. He was seeing yellow and black. Yes, but was. what I'm saying to you is, I told, I told Lance, I said, if you doubt my allegiance to the 215, to Jim's on 4th and South, to Lincoln Financial, to Carson Wentz, and the rest of the crew, I said, wait till this season. I said, because yes, I was. I was a huge fan solely for the fact of I thought mm. that. Tom Brady and the Patriots got done dirty, and they needed to be vindicated. And they have been. I hate to Eric's, say it, but it looks like Eric's they're going to be vindicated this, again. Time out. This season? <laughs> oh, I'm truly taking Philadelphia to a whole nother level. Yeah, Y'all but, have not seen me at my finest wow, when it comes to Philadelphia. Got a couple wide receivers, and, you, and now you got your He's chest puffed out. Say what, Smallwood for say what you, keep talking. You got, you got your chest puffed out now because you, cause you finally got a couple you eat. Wendell Small, I'll make you eat those words. Eric's trading in Philly cheesesteaks and fries for lobster rolls and clam chowder. I'm looking oh, for. I, I need to get. I need to get Eric a birthday present. Tom oh, Pinkston not. jersey, old alligator <laughs> arms himself. And I want him to wear it every game this season. It doesn't <laughs> happen overnight. It slowly, slowly happens. Yeah. Changes manifests. like this just slowly happen, like water okay. in a rock. It, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. Keep I haven't talking even, I haven't even talked to you guys about the NFL because I haven't been here. I'm gonna so I'm 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 let y'all. I'm gonna let y'all go. But when <laughs> August hits and we do our preseason show, at the I'm probably sure we're gonna do it oh, at old school. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and just go on record as of now to say repeat, baby. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all have your fun, but make no mistake about it. When we get to the NFC East, and more importantly, when we get to my Philadelphia Eagles, I'm gonna let you. You, you, Kristen, Dwayne, and anybody else who has ever doubted my allegiance, I'm going to serve notice to every single one of y'all. Just so, as Dwayne would say, so it is written, so shall it be done. Yeah, do you have, do you have a uh, forehand or a backhand serve? What do we got here? You got an underarm? <laughs> Y'all have to wait till August to find out. Make sure we bring Lance on Let's the Let's just panel. bring a chair in there so we can stand on it again. Yeah, exactly. Act all high and mighty and pout. Yep. <laughs> Has crap. I'm not pouting. <laughs> have, have you heard Dwayne's intro for his word of the week? Or oh, his uh, his no. Words I was too busy that. hearing just scribbling on a sheet of paper. His Webster's words. Oh, I'll pull no, Webster's over. words with yeah, Dwayne. Yeah, he's got a, Dwayne yeah. has his own segment. There yeah. we go. His own because his what was his last word? Analogous. Analogous. Okay, here's the fact here. that you know that. Here's the clip. And now, whole nother level presents Dwayne Lindo's Webster's words for this week. Analogous. <laughs> You, oh my god! <laughs> I can't wait. This has, so this is a new yeah. That's a new segment. It's gonna be so yeah. great. So what you have to go back and listen <laughs> to that show is I literally we had to stop the show because I had to get him to not only repeat the word but explain it to us. And then when we were at J Dubs, yes, I I, I I was listening in on that. And I said, does anybody know what? The, and we actually had one of the patrons at J Dubs actually come up and tell us what because i was like i cannot believe this Dwayne just and he'll just throw them out 
Like you thought my words were big. Yeah. Like horrendous, tremendous, and all porous. Porous. Oh, man, geez. You had a bunch of them this I past did. football season. I was like, wow. This man doesn't talk that much when we're at work. He's just like, they have a porous defense. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, don't, don't worry. Everybody will each get a segment. But that's that's his. But we that's also great. we I also we also have another segment. It's called the sports arena. Um, basically, when we have a heated topic, and two people want to go head to head, do we have a ring? I'm um, gonna make one. We'll set. I'm one making up. one up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But where we're gonna actually go head to head, one on one, and present your case, uh, and it's called whole other level entering the sports arena. I like it. So. Me gusta. All right. I think that's it for today. I think we're done. Let's go ahead and ride out of here. So uh, thank you all for chiming in, tuning in. We love you and thank you. So for the Factual Frank Mazzei, Craig back in the building. Since I can never get his last name right, you're just Craig from this point forward. Jeez, come on now. How long have you known me? <laughs> I know, but I keep putting the S on the end. It's because you say cousins. I know. You actually, yeah. Did I tell you Super Bowl I'm, Sunday? Your I'm mom, not related to Kirk. I know. Did I tell you Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday your mom came up to me and corrected me? <laughs> Good for my mom. Hey, she did. There's no F. She did. There's she, no F. She that did. is awesome. She thought we had a great show, but she wanted to make it a point to let me know that there there's is no, no F. S. There, right? there's no F. <laughs> I have to cut. The, it's cousin. There's also no O. It's just C U S S O N. It's like cu- like cousin, I, cousin, something. Cousin. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm cussing at you. Yeah, cousin. When did y'all One like, day you'll get it. Yeah, well, eventually. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's been eight years. I, you think I would uh, have it? It, by it, now. it might actually be in Dwayne Lindo's words of wisdom one day. <laughs> we should put that in there. <laughs> it's cousin. <laughs> How to properly say cousin. Like, <laughs> cousin. He's gonna have to use it in right. sentence. Yeah. So you know he's gonna have to. He's gonna say the origin for you Craig, know? the factual Frank, the great El Bushman. This is your man Eric Wilson. Until Tuesday, oh, we have taken you to a whole nother level. We'll see you next time. Chief, mate, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. 